Kawhi. You know I'm from LA, man. When I saw there's a dragon sighting in Los Angeles in a cloud during a thunderstorm. Well, shit, I had to click on it, man. You know, we got cut off in part three. I'll call this part four, but it's actually cool because it gets, a, gets us a little extra time for this documentary. I want to check out, man, and uh, let's dig on it. But first, let's dig on this dragon sighting in the clouds. Talking to L.A. Los Angeles during a thunderstorm. Can you see it? Can you see it? Can you see it? Can you see a dragon man in Los Angeles in a cloud during? The thunderstorm. Hey, maybe it's just uh, some some crazy craziness, right? Or maybe there's a dragon in a cloud during a thunderstorm. Just chilling. Just chilling in a cloud. I don't know. I don't know. But we are the home of Drop Nation. and We're constantly dropping that drop, man. What's dropping over here? Higher Mark is dropping over here. Children of the Soil, part two, get part one. The brother is phenomenal. All the way real real spill from the gut bone. All a hive, all tribal. That's it. All tribal and nothing else. Higher Mark. Peace to show day. Peace to the fam. Peace to the tribe. All across the plain. Peace to Hawa Stu. Keep supporting the J Stu Baby Fun, man. The beautiful, beautiful, beautiful daughter just dropped. Yapa. Shalom. Shabbat up for J Stu and the Stewart family. You can always go here to support Drop Nation. You know what I mean? And, uh, you know what I'm saying? We are awakening. Are we not? We are returning. Are we not? We're talking trees and tribal. We are making our exodus from the concrete prisons to once again vibrate with our creator and sacred trees, man. So, you want to drop it on us, uh, you know, in an emergency capacity. You got the drop, man. You can support the J Stew Baby Fun right here, man. You click this, you get the drop, man. Drop that drop. Support the tribal emergency fund that we got going. Drop the drive so we prepared no matter what. Man, show that love, man. See, it is 11 9. I'm talking Peru, I'm talking Teach Me To Be Priestly. I'm talking all the bros, all the tribe, man. That's that's just tribing up in real time. We talk, you know, we talk about buying more land and more land. So these bros are getting together to acquire more land. They got a plan and it's beautiful. And we support it. We support all our family that's tribing up to get land. If it's you, Get at it so we can also show that a hop and have you up here and talk about, you know what I'm saying, with you and your, you know what I'm saying, folks, that's in real time, wherever the Most High is building you, you're building up and tribing up. And we're all the same. We have no barrier. We are all the same. Cedars of Lebanon. Cedars of Lebanon. Teach me to be priestly. Peru got the drop. All the family, you know what I'm saying. All the family, all the ones, man, we, we just had a wonderful powwow. All the family that we powwow with, much a hop to you, man. What a beautiful pure water situation. And, you know what I'm saying, you just want to support and show your support for you know, what we're doing with the Drop Radio, 
you know what I mean, everything we're building, man, as far as, uh, you know what I'm saying, just really wanting to get our emergency broadcast going, that's our next stage, so that the internet go down, we still have an emergency system, so all this stuff, obviously, you know what I'm saying, it takes an infrastructure, you know, doing this, coming live and doing what we want to do, which is come live every day, which is a full-time situation, it requires us to still be able to take our children out to get some ice cream or something, so when you drop it on this PayPal, you allow myself and Chef Candy to operate, man, and we can do that for you all in one place, and, uh, you know, continue to build brick by brick with you, Drop Nation, the foundation, so support, 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 and this is what's popping, man, we all, we are all rallying behind Jay Stu and the crew, Jay Stu and Camellia is so beautiful for that increase, that increase, love to tie battle for that wonderful poem, yeah, you know, we're gonna dig on some drag and drop, Again, I um, you know, I'm trying to make this real, you know, real friendly and easy to operate. That other player I had up here was kind of I found out kind of slowing us down, so I took that out and just put up a live listen link so you can click on listen live. It's going to open up a separate tab. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. 432 Drop Radio. Oh, hey, hey. Ah, ah, ah. Mm, ah, mm. All right, man, then you in the groove, man. So then you got your separate tab, and you can just surf the wave and be like, man, what's popping on the drop? Oh, you talking about that power, 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 praise hawa, the bawa. Increase the Stewart family, congratulations. Our tribe, Chameleon, J. Stu, baby girl, baby girl, man, beautiful thing, beautiful, beautiful vibration, we feel it already, the strength of this wonderful seed, so, we just dropping that drop, man, don't mind us, you know, I love the Thai battle, man, she's teaching me so much, man, you know what I'm saying, this is all Thai battle, this is all Thai battle, let go, weather drop, you know, what's this Norma thing, man, you dig on it, you know what I'm saying, we're talking about storms hitting uh, New York, I think, on the 20th. You know what I mean? Just just, just be aware. You know, all Hawa. All Hawa. Irvin Reed, unity for us, solidarity with others, part two. The disbow. Irvin Reed is 100, surfing all of the wave. He is the water. Irvin Reed. Ah, my brother. Food drop chef, Aki Detox. Yeah, that's that CB electric, man. So much going into that. Uh, you know, Chef Candy also, you know, saying, builds on, you know, just all we can do is keep building on these, you know, different uh, variations, man. And, you know, the electric Trini diet is what my wife, you know, from Trinidad, she loves digging on the electric Trini, you know what I'm saying? Puts the electric ingredients, you know what I'm saying, with the Trinidad flow. And then, of course, you know what I'm saying, since, you know what I'm saying, we, we, we rock, you know what I mean, the ancient uh, diet, the Levitical diet, man. So with that Levitical diet, with the CB electricity and you combine the Trinidad, you know what I mean, with the, you know what I'm saying, American, that American flair, then that's what you get with Chef Candy and Chef Aki is, you know, definitely teaching us a lot. Love the Chef Aki. Secret drop. All right, what's going on on the 23rd, man? Get part two because it breaks down all the, you know, you know, we, we did our own uh, a fresh water perspective on this uh, September 23rd with the leviathan and looking at it as a leviathan dragon so you know, go dig on it you know hurricane jose that's what i'm saying night strike they are talking about september 20th hitting the east coast all right yeah man we just digging on it man we live right now this is live radio 432 to drop i can come out here any moment you'll hear this you hear me take it over with some drop man arthur scott might be trying to take it over with that drop, man. All the authors that are interested and, you know, starting to submit, you know, 5, 10 minutes, 20 minutes, whatever you want to do. Uh, hour shows, whatever you want to do, you know what I'm saying? There's different ways that we can discuss it. You can send me some pre-recorded drop and I can just put it up in our scheduler. And it will play on whatever days we decide, you know, is best for you and whatever the case is. Um... You know, we can play it daily, you know what I'm saying? We can do all kinds of things, man. So if you want to be 
you know, have your own radio show in our radio network, 432 to Drop Radio is not just one radio show, it's an entire network for all of Drop Nation to drop their drop without Google, without YouTube, just nothing but radio. You can even do podcasts, you know what I mean? So, you know, we try to keep it simple, man. It's as simple as sending us, you can send us a five minute MP3 and we can just load it up in the scheduler. Well, Wednesdays at such and such, Arthur Scott come on. So, we're trying to fill all these slots up. Definitely get at me, man. Music at 432 com. And I started making my list and checking it twice, man. Talking that C drop, the original American Tyrone Street dropping that drop. Science drop. Scientists are baffled by a mysterious mountain that lays eggs. We got this in part one. I got a little snippet of it in part two or part three. Man, what part are we on? I think you know, we got this in part two. Anyway, man, get all the parts, man. All right. But definitely, yeah, there's a tree that's hatching or, you know, developing these eggs made of stone but they're dragon eggs you know because the chinese know about this right they know about this right poetic drop tie battle man urban reed we doing it man got some secret drop more health drop money drop for you for you right. what's going on in these oceans man tech drop Best smart home tech. All right, man. So come get this drop, man. Paco. He's no longer Paco. He is Paco. Paco. Let go. Indigenous soul. Ah, si, na, lugo. <laughs> Let's go, man. What we got bumping, man? We got that Janelle Monet bumping at 432. So this is live radio. We've been working on it for a while. And we vibing it, man. And we appreciate your aha. And we are increasing. We are increasing. As a tribe, we are increasing. We are Thaba. Wow. Increase. Aha, man. Get that drop from Hiram, man. And that's how we do it, man. So you can click here and you have it playing and it doesn't interrupt your flow at all. Uh, of course, you know what I'm saying, you know, you can get it up here by just clicking listen at the top of the page and you'll be right there the same way into that Janelle Monet. And all that's in 432, so we have thousands of songs that have been tuned to 432, um, different playlists playing throughout the day. We're continuing to sharpen those up and, you know what I'm saying, working with Isaac Ford is dope, man, because the bro is so amazing. He tunes up so much music, you know what I mean? So we're putting it all together. We're putting it all together, all right? Now, you know, I want to get this, um, what I want to get? Yeah, I want to get this documentary. Let's just go ahead and surf the wave with it. Then we'll get, do a dismount into some more Dragonfly drop and maybe one or two other things. So let's go, man. Let's try it on this page. Might have to go to page three because we drop so much drop. Each page is about 22 drops. And I try to fill up a page a day, you know what I mean? So I appreciate your uh, aha, man, because, uh, you know. Hey, man, one day, man, one day, man, we're going to have like, it's going to be dropping, man. If you think it's dropping now, just know the most high definitely has a design and you know our people are going to wake up our people going to wake up wait did that go too far uh perusalem yeah that's the drop man get that perusalem drop september 23rd and you know you know for me man the the connection that the bros pulling man with with the calendar and how he's breaking down the counting from the eclipse and the 30 days and the month of alu and ethanin or ethanin ethanin you know what i'm saying you know what I mean? It's a beautiful thing. And he's, you know, doing it in that way leading up to the September 30, 23rd Feast of Trumpets. You know what I'm saying? Rosh Hashanah, Rosh Hashanah, Rosh Hashanah. You know what I'm talking about. All right. So it's a beautiful thing because we got to still, you know, take all this into account. And it's a great accountability that the bro is digging on right now. So I have to Peru Salam. We're just talking Peru, you know. Hey. Let me see. Okay, it's dragonflies carry significant meaning. We got that, I think. Teachings of the dragonfly. All right, what else we got about the dragon, man? I know we have one more thing. Oh, 
Ooh, our new baby boo. Damn, no, I told you we had to go to page three. Told y'all we had to go to page three. Okay, this is Jones. We some more chef up key. Yeah, let's try page three. You know, it's the easy way to do this. I could have went to our search box and just put in dragon. I should try to uh, see how good it works. The last dragon of fantasy made real. All right, that's one of them. But I think the one I want. The one I want is, oh, we got that, five dragons caught on tape. Man, we've been digging it. This is y'all, this is y'all. This is really Jay Stu's fault, man, because Jay Stu's been dropping a lot of these links. So has AD, man, Uno, Isaac, all the family, higher, man. So, you know, we got a lot of this drop coming out, man. The truth about dragon energy, we got that. Flying dinosaurs, man. Which one did I want to drop? Uh, was it the last dragon? Uh, you know what, man? It was that last dragon drop. It might be this one. Let's try this one. The last dragon, man. If you ain't seen the last dragon, man, we show enough. Man, go watch it again. This ain't that, but definitely go watch that again. We just talking that dragon drop, man. And uh, you know, let's see what's popping in the ice. Now, this is, you know, based on a real true story. So... With all the drop we've gotten, we've gotten to this part so that we can, you know, see it with a fresh perspective and really learn a little bit more about your dragons. Let's go. Hunger drives him on. The T-Rex has a clear weight advantage. So his prey bluffs. Extends its wings to give the illusion that it is much larger than it really is. But the T-Rex isn't buying it. So the creature... You notice he keeps calling it a creature. And what you're about to learn is that this is a baby dragon being attacked by a T-Rex. So you see already that there was beef between your dragons and their so-called dinosaurs. Let's go. Tries a different tag. predator's sensitive ears, the sound is incredibly painful, but the T-Rex is still not deterred. And up here, there's nowhere to hide. But it is the T-Rex, not his prey, that is fatally exposed. They are not alone. This is her territory, and she's protecting her son. Dragons, dinosaurs, dragons, dinosaurs. Enmity between the seed and this other beast here, right? Dragons drawing dinosaurs. So you've been believing in dinosaurs. It's not that far-fetched to connect your dragon counterparts that protected you and your dragon lines and your energy grid and your vortexes and your gold. Let's go.
Tyrannosaurus will not last the night. But the mother is also seriously injured. With a broken wing, she can no longer hunt to feed herself or her offspring. But 65 million years from now, the T-Rex's skull will inspire a theory in the mind of a brilliant young paleo. Dodge the hijacked shit was not 65 fucking million years ago. When they're finding human prints and dragon prints side by side. So, you know, hey, this is all around the same time when humans were walking with, so-called humans were walking with dinosaurs. Dinosaurs was chasing hybrids back into their caves. Your dragons were protecting you from all this shit. Recently, now you see dragon eggs coming out of trees. All right, get the other parts so you're all caught up. Let's go. This is one of only three intact T-Rex skulls that have ever been found. It all started five years ago when I discovered this complete T-Rex in Montana. It was big news. Dr. Jack Tanner, paleontologist, an overnight celebrity. But then I blew it. I proposed the existence of an impossible creature. You see, my T-Rex skull was damaged in a very specific way. To me, the injuries were evidence of an attack by a predator unlike anything known to science. The evidence was undeniable. So I tried to get others to see things my way. The nature of these marks suggests that this skull was punctured by three sharp objects in the arc. It's a talon formation. But I don't believe that these puncture wounds actually killed the Rex. The real death blow is here. See? Symmetrical deposits of carbon down both sides of the skull. These are scorch marks. Precise. Aimed. Perhaps my childhood obsession had clouded my thinking. You see, as a kid, I was mad about dragons. Dragons from the high seas, flying dragons from Greenland, fire-breathing dragons from Europe. And here's the thing that got me. These myths came from all over the world, right? From cultures that could never have met. And yet from the Andes to the Himalayas, you could hear stories of dragons. How? Here's a kid's best guess because the stories were real. Last week, guess what? Out of nowhere, the Dragon Man is thrown a lifeline, another find. Not Montana this time, but on a Romanian mountain. Romania, all right, let's go to Romania, man. Rome, Romani, Romania, Roma, Roma, India, Roma. Romania is named after Roma, which is India. We're in the Indias. Love to AD for this drop, by the way, man. AD dropped this, man. I'm trying to tell you, man. Dragon drop, man. It's prime time right now because we're talking energy, frequency, vibration, fire, water, air, and earth. had fallen into a network of ice caves. They found something horrific. A body 
And he wasn't wearing the latest lightweight thermals. It was ancient. There's nothing the police could do with a 15th century corpse. This was a case for historians, not detectives. But police being police, they couldn't resist and nose around. They uncovered a medieval crime scene. A massacre. They moved deeper into the cave and soon wish they hadn't. Now, I don't know the Romanian word for dragon, but someone said it. So the Romanians contact the museum in London. Is this thing a hoax or what? Now, the museum, they're ready to pass. They have an international reputation to maintain. I get to hear about it and figure I'm the perfect solution. The man with no reputation to lose. Have you seen the pictures? Every head of department has seen the pictures. And? Well, the museum's been formally asked by the Romanian authorities in the strictest confidence to help with this find. It's got them in quite a state. They don't know what they've got, and neither do we. Can I go? On the museum's behalf? I can call a meeting. Okay, now you research this, because this ain't play play. Alright? They're reenacting this, man. This is what popped off. They said, shit, we got a fucking dragon. Now he gets, or you know, this this character, this this researcher gets to uh, you know dig in on it, and he finds out some interesting things. You know, I like that the way they serve here because he takes a very skeptical approach. Everyone is 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 doubting him, and you know he has to make his you know redemption. So he's looking for redemption, and of course, a dragon symbolizes redemption. A dragon flies symbolizes change, redemptive change freedom so we're all looking for the same thing so i can serve this wave he's trying to prove dragons are real to science and scientists and museums and authorities that don't want to hear that shit let's go we go so here i am with two of the museum's rising stars who see me as a bad career move We've got strict orders. If this thing's of any interest, get it shipped back to London. If it's a hoax, make our excuses and leave. If news gets out, I'm the fall guy. Either way, I lose. Unless, by one chance in a million, it's not a hoax. It's a dragon. Maybe then I get my reputation back. Redemption. Freedom. Carpathian Mountains. Look it up. It starts badly. They've moved everything off of the mountain. Who knows what evidence might have been disturbed. So we're in the backwoods, at a makeshift mortuary in an overgrown shed. The official word is the bodies have been blackened by ice, but I wonder... Ask me, I'd say they have a different story to tell. But I mind my own business. My assignment is through here. No 
Nobody said anything about a whole carcass. It's massive. I can see why the Romanians were cagey. I should be too, if I had any sense. This has got to be a hoax. Hasn't it? So let's get this over with. 12.05 p.m., June 25th. Dr. Tanner and team are forced to begin an immediate examination of an unidentified animal. The skin looks real enough. Too well preserved. <coughs> if this is a hoax, it's the best I've ever seen. Okay, sweetheart. What are you? scaly. It has a tail. Now both suggest that this is some sort of reptile and yet there are two limbs visible ending with what appear to be talons. Now these are general characteristics Characteristics of powered flight. Could this thing really fly? It's too heavy for these small wings. They couldn't create nearly enough lift to get its carcass off the ground. You see, to fly, you have to obey the laws of physics. There is a relationship between weight, power, and wingspan. Wing measurements give us wingspan under 20 feet. It's not enough. This creature looks built to fly. It's got all the parts, but at the moment, they just don't add up. Estimated weight? I'm guessing 900 pounds, maybe 950. He's not like this. Don't tell me. The wing to weight ratio is way out. Couldn't fly, right? It's too heavy. A creature with wings that can't fly. That spells trouble. Two weeks have passed since his mother saved him from the T-Rex, and the young dragon is in trouble. His mother is dead. The injury to her wing proved fatal. He cannot fly, and with no one to hunt for him, he too will die. The smell from his mother's carcass is attracting scavengers. For the moment, they're just pterosaurs. But who knows what other creatures may pick up the scent. This dragon lost his mother at a critical moment. Somehow, he has to teach himself to fly before it's too late. And if he does get airborne, it will be thanks to one of nature's most astonishing feats of engineering. This just gets stranger by the minute. Internal scans show a massive heart. That's typical of flying creatures. Those chest muscles would need large quantities of oxygen-rich blood. Your bones are perfectly designed for flight, too. The internal structure is very specialized. It's honeycombed. You see this lightweight structure in bird skeletons. Their bones are strong, but still light enough for flight. but you're still too heavy for those wings. Come on, what's your secret? Any 
good news? There's something unusual inside the chest cavity. What are these? The image is too fuzzy. We don't have time to speculate. I'm going inside. second pair of lungs but there's no internal structure bladders maybe they must have held something you pass me a syringe please Unable to hunt, the young dragon exploits the only food available to him. His mother's meat will keep him alive for a few days. But if he can't fly, he can't hunt. His future looks bleak. Yet, even in death, his mother may still help him. In their gut, all creatures contain bacteria that help them to break down food. And as they do this, they release gas. But the bacteria inside dragons are unique, and the gas they produce is special. It is channeled into two storage chambers, the dragon's flight bladders. Alongside the super light skeleton, these bladders provide the key to flight, provided you know how to use them. This young dragon will have to learn fast. The scent of his decomposing mother has attracted the most dangerous creature imaginable. An aging male dragon. Its broken horns and dull markings betray a dragon at the end of his days. And this is bad news for our juvenile. Continuous battles over territory mean that most males never reach old age. But this dragon is still around. He's a survivor, and he's hungry. The youngster senses that given the choice, he'd prefer fresh meat. And this time, his mother isn't there to save him. His only hope is to take to the air. than air. It's odorless, colorless. You put hydrogen in a balloon, what happens? It floats away, right? The juvenile heads for the trees. The old male cannot fly here. Inside, the young dragon's body is working overtime. Heart beating, muscles pumping, and hydrogen is collecting at a phenomenal rate. Fully expanded, what would you say is the cubic capacity of one of these things? 15 cubic feet. There are two. That's 30. 30 cubic feet, a pump full of hydrogen. What kind of lift does that give us? Not quite there, but maybe. The youngster's flight bladders are now full, but crucially, so is his stomach. The undigested meat is weighing him down. Just in time, instinct takes over. He empties his stomach. 
and spreads his wings. interesting bring it back to the museum that was the plan well it's interesting all right but let's see what else we can find out before we have to leave okay time to put our heads into the lion's mouth it was clearly a carnivore a formidable predator What's going on here? You've got incisors for ripping meat and molars, grinding seat? teeth. Stingrays have the same kind of teeth for crunching rock-hard shells. But what would a meat-eating predator want with teeth like these? Several years have passed, and our juvenile is now a young adult. But he is homeless. Without territory, he will never have a regular supply of food. And he will never mate. But his time has come. In the past, he has strayed accidentally inside the territory of dominant males. Today, there is no mistake. It is a daring act. Half of all young males are killed in territorial battles. The dull coat of adolescence has transformed into a vibrant display designed to intimidate rival males. But before he makes himself known, he takes on stores of a rare and valuable mineral found at the heart of every dragon territory. Valuable mineral. How much you want to bet they got something to do with copper, Later, I think they're going to even call it platinum. He's getting all kind of valuable minerals out of the trees. So we say when they're flying into these trees or around these mountains and these trees and they're putting their eggs in. I mean, if he's getting, he's saying their territory. So if their territory are these mountains and these stone eggs are coming out these mountains. All right. Remember the stone eggs. And yeah, that makes perfect dang sense. And what's going to happen when all these eggs hatch from all these mountains all across the plain? When I said, what if every Negro had a dragon, I wasn't fucking with you. I'm saying, what if every Negro has a dragon? I don't know what else you could imagine that would be doper than that. <laughs> I mean, for real, for real. That's mind blasting, man. You trying to get a, you know, uh, <laughs> you trying to get a pea shooter, man, and try to protect yourself. You like, you know, the creators like rock with me. I'll give you a dragon. Yeah, man. I know you wanna. I know you wanna Draco. I know you wanna Soldier Boy Draco. But I'm gonna give you a dragon. I'm gonna give you a Draco. I'm gonna give you a Drake. You know, Drake means dragon. Drake is dragon. Ah, but which dragon is Drake? These dragons are territorial. 
and they were territorial protecting you. He is preparing for the fight of his life. And these rocks will hold the key. The inner surface of the mouth is incredible. It's almost armor plated. Ah, now this is something I've definitely seen before. A fleshy valve at the back of the throat. This flap is very similar to the false palates found in crocodile throats. Crocs use it to stop their lungs from flooding while holding prey underwater. It's a very distinctive shape and come to think of it, I think I've seen fossils of this somewhere. This is a highly specialized structure. Can you scout the excavations in uh, Dick Sides Museum, see if anything like this bone has popped up anywhere else? Well, maybe it's an adaptation. Maybe it wasn't used to prevent water flooding the lungs. Maybe it's to prevent a backdraft of fire from burning the throat. Boy, when you say it out loud, does it sound lame. It doesn't look like fire ever came out of this creature's mouth. There's no carbonized food residue, no signs of charring whatsoever. Since of all the tools are here, they just haven't been used. Perhaps it didn't breathe fire at all. Well, maybe you're right. Let's take a step back. Nature isn't constrained by our lack of imagination. Think about it. The natural world is full of bizarre creatures that have the most extraordinary weapons, tongues like spears, colors that change, and shapes, lassoes even. But a creature that breathes fire? Bear with me. Meet the bombardier beetle. Now when this guy gets angry, he fires out liquid at a temperature of over 200 degrees Fahrenheit. Now how's he do it? By pumping a liquid fuel into a reaction chamber where a catalyst ignites it. Bang. Exploding chemicals have nowhere to go but out. And with a bang. Now is that how dragons did it? In the heart of his territory, the resident dragon, the alpha male, blasts a warning into the air. It signals that he is fit, healthy, and confident enough to waste precious fire on a display. The message is not lost on our young challenger. If he has any chance at all of winning this duel, he must be at his very best, because the stakes are high. With territory comes not only a guaranteed supply of food, but the one thing every young male needs if he is to leave his mark on the next generation. Females. And this female is the reason he is here. She's in season, and for just one month, will breed with the alpha male. He's killed for her before, and he'll do it again. Okay. Back to basics. What do we need to produce fire? We need fuel, and we need something to light it with, an ignition system. We need a light combustible material like gas now what did you say was in these things a hydrogen and methane how could I have been so stupid I need a light methane. 
both combustible gases, both lighter than air. These sacks double up as buoyancy aids and fuel stores. Evolution at its most economical. So far, so good. But how did you ignite it? Can I take a sample, please? The Alpha Male is an experienced war horse. With nothing to prove, he's lost the bright colors that mark out the young challenger. Experience tells immediately. The alpha male catches our youngster with his first strike. Instinctively, the young dragon heads for cover. The cold, damp clouds will also dull the pain. But the alpha male is not without his problems. These dogfights are calculated affairs. The hydrogen in his fuel tanks also has to keep him airborne. Every blast of flame reduces his mobility. The challenger appears to accept defeat. He heads for the territorial boundary. It seems that now his best hope is to escape with his life. The alpha male drives on. He would rather finish him now. But he has misjudged his young opponent. The youngster is faster, more agile, and crucially, he has a full payload to burn. Wouldn't you know it? That sediment on the creature's molars, it's rock, with particularly large traces of platinum. Platinum is not just a precious metal, it's also a catalyst. Like our old friend the bombardier beetle, fuel needs an ignition system. And when platinum combines with oxygen and hydrogen, it combusts. Oh! <laughs> it produces fire. Where's your dragon, Negro? Where's your dragon, American? Our young pretender has triumphed. The female prepares to accept her new dragon overlord. All his life, he's fought the odds, and at last, he's made it. My theory was right after all, and you're the proof. You could fly, you could breathe fire. 65 million years ago, one of your ancestors killed my T-Rex. So how did your ancestors survive when the dinosaurs didn't? The natural history of our planet tells me that it simply couldn't have happened. 65 million years ago, at the peak of our dragon's success, curtain comes crashing all right dodge the motherfucking hijack this shit is recent history all right so you know they're gonna try to take you through evolution and put you all through that darwin shit but stick to the dragon stay focused let go down on the cretaceous period that's the hijack a meteorite the size of mount everest smashes into the planet Known as the KT event, it wipes out nearly all life on Earth. But somehow, your species did survive. How? If the KT meteorite... Now, the real destruction that took place was this Atlantis destruction. 
you can line that up, you know, in the script where, you know, in the days of Peleg was the earth divided. Line it up, line it up. All right, we're talking thousands of years ago, not millions of years ago. We're talking about the de destruction of Atlantis. We're talking about Lemuria, Mu, all of these fallen lands that are fallen recently. All right, this is the old world still standing because it is a twin of those. It is a twin of that which is, you know, beneath the water right now. And now, you know, when they try to put you in so-called Africa, they're skipping over all this history. Why? All right. So dodge the hijack. But this is all going down in Atlantis. And it's like, well, how did this dragon survive or these dragons survive the Atlantean destruction or the destruction of Atlantis of the hijack? Well, obviously, there are dragons. They survive because the creator... You know what I'm saying? Give shelter and salvation to those that have a frequency that is above the barrier. And if you're still here, your seed is still thriving and we know we are rising. That we know we are connecting back above the barrier. And this is a frequency. This is beyond three dimensions. This is just, you know what I'm saying, what's being represented in the three-dimensional so-called reality, which is an illusion. This is all a fourth, fifth dimensional octave, higher octaves, 864, 1728. All right, 432 above the barrier. You're getting back in your energy, your frequency, your fire, water, air, and earth. So this is what's happening based on what the creator is allowing. The destruction of Atlantis destroyed a lot of hijack, but the you know all these creations were still, um, you know what I'm saying, you know, sheltered and nurtured through that stuff, you know what I'm saying? So they knew what to do. Even our people knew what to do in certain instances, you know what I mean, to be a remnant. We always had a remnant. So if Atlantis was destroyed, was all the people destroyed? Of course not. We continued. We continued. And now they're seeing the old world return. Now they're seeing the ancient ones return. The ancient knowledge, the ancient energy, frequency, the ancient dragons finished off the dinosaurs how did a giant species like yours survive let's think straight what are the large creatures survive kt sharks skates rays turtles coelacanths among others and all have in common their marine life on crocodiles too marine crocodiles the false palate it's found in crocodiles. Raised nostrils, suggesting a creature that could hold its prey in its jaws and breathe while completely submerged in water. But this creature didn't swim, it flew. It has wings and talons, not webbed feet, suggesting the pallet must be an evolutionary relic. Somewhere in the dim and distant past, this creature's ancestors lived in water. <laughs> hey, I know y'all caught that shit. So, you already, we've been digging. This is part four, and they didn't know that we would dig that deep. So, you know, forgive them for trying to put evolution on our ass. So fucking swift. That train is never late. Trying to say, oh, um, shit. It looks like you used to be able to swim in water millions of years ago. We just learned about dragons that they sleep in the water and they hunt for their prey and fly around during the day. There's different types of dragons. You got marine dragons. You got a leviathan, which is a dragon that live in the water only. So they're trying to put all dragons into one category and say, oh, it looks like you might have been able to swim in water back then because you don't have wet feet, see? As if that disqualifies him as a dragon from living in water or sleeping in water. He still is able to breathe with his prey in his mouth. If he can do that now, what do you mean he could have swum? He's still swimming. <laughs> If he can still breathe underwater with his prey in his mouth, clearly he's still swimming. 
Nah, it must have been millions of years, 60 million years ago. Man, y'all died to hijack with me. You coming with me. Some bullshit, yo. Water did indeed provide dragons with the escape route from one of the deadliest events in the Earth's history. But not the prehistoric dragon. The land living dragon was indeed wiped out. <laughs> Look at this shit. But the land living dragon was indeed wiped out. Really? How can you say that with such supreme confidence when we're still seeing dragon sightings? Land breed land dragons now. We're still seeing land dragons. And eggs coming out of trees. So dodge them. Damn. I mean, see how they give you some drop, but they fucked you up at the same time. That's why you gotta surf the way. That's why you gotta surf the way. Alright, man. It's kinda irritating though, you know? A little irritating, man. I'm sorry, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna choose up. I'm alright, man. Calm on. I'm gonna calm down. I'm just saying, you know, all right, let's just go. It was not alone. The dragon family had another branch. At the time of... They had many different dragons. They don't have to separate them into time periods. Look, they're going to put prehistoric, this period, that period. Oh, this period was a different breed of dragons. Why couldn't there just be a bunch of different... Ain't there a bunch of different dogs and cats? That's like somebody discovering a dog 60 million years from now and I'm saying, oh man, this, look at this dog. Oh, there's a different variation of this dog. Oh, there's a Doberman picture. Oh, there's a Chihuahua. They must be 40 million years apart. They must be different periods of history that it went from a Chihuahua to a Doberman picture to a Great Dane. Oh, that must have been 7,000 years later. Come on, man, dodge the hijack. The KT catastrophe. The prehistoric dragon had a cousin. Oh, shit. The marine dragon. Oh, shit. His cousin. Both species were descended from a common ancestor, but they followed very different evolutionary paths. Hmm, evolutionary paths. The marine dragon lived in the sea. And life in the sea was less affected by the KT event. As they evolved, their flight bladders became swim bladders. Man. Their large wings reduced to become fins. Come on, man. There's different types of dragons, man. Sorry, I'm not yelling at y'all. I'm yelling at the hijack. There's different types of dragons, fool. Some have wings and some don't. Sea fish. Remember the etymology of dragon to begin with? Keep the, yeah, we keep it around because it ain't play play. <laughs> you never know when we need to pull it out. Dragon. Huge serpent. Dragon, all right. Giant sea fish. So if the etymology of dragon is a giant sea fish, you know what the fuck this guy talking about? It's a sea fish. It's from the ocean. It's not like it's evolved from the ocean to land. It's a sea fish. It's been a sea fish. It's going to be a sea fish. And there's different types. Some choose land more. Some choose water more. Some choose land only. Some choose water only. Whatever their design is. And they're living with each other. Oh, they're prehistoric cousins. I got a cousin right now. I got a cousin right now named Peanut, and he's living at the same time as me. But they're going to find me and Peanut and be like, oh, man, oh, that's Drop's prehistoric cousin, Peanut. He must have lived 4,000 years later because it's his cousin. They're giant sea fish. And remember, we're only talking about seeing clearly, to see clearly, to see clearly. We're going to get back on this dragonfly drop. Oh, man. We got some good dragonfly drop. 
clear visions, clear visions, man. It's all about the, you know, the, you know, hey, man. The property is seen and believed as the end of one self-created illusions, the matrix, and a clear vision into the realities of life. This is what it's all about with these dragons and dragonflies, man. This is what it's all about, stepping into reality, man. Why are we digging on it? Because we must. You don't think it's important to know your habitat, to know that mountains are trees. You don't think it's important to know that your dragons are you. <laughs> There's no you without it. It is what it is. I ain't crazy. I promise you. Let go. And their powerful tails became brothers. <laughs> Oh, Marine dragons thrived. Uh -huh. Then, as global temperatures rose and the land recovered, some marine dragons returned to shallow waters. Estuaries and rivers, they eventually made their first tentative steps back onto land. You know, so maybe this is a story of one particular marine dragon that is a marine dragon because it's a marine dragon. What they're going to say that he came off the land and then evolved his wings back. Come on, man. Come on, man. Anyway, man, you know, you see, you know, all right. We search all the possibilities here. So this this is one possibility of one particular marine dragon that avoided destruction of Atlantis underwater. Easy. I could dig on that. But stop making it a conclusive for 100% of all dragons must have evolved this way. And now it, this is making its step for all dragons across the plane. Come on, man. All right, man. This is one dragon story. All right, let's go. The Sea Serpent. Are the legends actually about marine dragons? That false pellet, guess what? Looks like it's turned up at a dig site. This could be our missing link. Well, what kind of environment are we talking about? Forest. What kind of forest? Bamboo. I knew I'd seen the pallet before. It was in that excavation in China. I thought it had been from an extinct branch of crocodilian. Turns out to be much more exciting. So the water dragon came back on land and evolved into new species. At least one of them in Asia. Forest dwellings. What would you be like? Well, in Chinese mythology, dragons are low slung, elongated, slender. The kind of body one would expect from an animal that's recently adapted to water. Was it really suited for life in a forest? You know, all you're really learning is the different types of dragons that lived and coexisted at the same damn time. <clears throat> it wasn't one marine dragon that turned into a forest dragon. Dies that bullshit, all right? So, you know, you got to, you know, these different dragons that chose different type of environments. Some are marine, some are forest. You know what I mean? Some are, you know what I mean? Just, you know, so, dies the hijack. Just put it all together. So, you're learning about different types of your dragons. You're learning about how your dragon operate. You know what I mean? How the fire, you know what I'm saying, all the, you know, all the fire drop. You know I'm saying you learn all that stuff, man, so you can really break it on down. They ain't acting like it's play play, are they? They acting like they dissecting something that's absolutely reality. And if your dragon is real, my Negro, then every Negro, I guarantee you, 
has a dragon somewhere. Come on. The dragons that return to land discover that the prehistoric world has changed. The era of the dinosaur is over, and a new order of animals has risen up to fill the void. Mammals. And mammals provide plentiful food for dragons. The trick is to catch them. Pay attention to this. The superb camouflage and silent movement has made this dragon all but invisible in the bamboo forest. The wings on this dragon are too small for flight, but the flight bladders provide gentle lift and allow her to glide silently across the forest floor. The markings on her skin break up her outline in the dappled forest light. And to be sure, this massive relic from the age of the dinosaur has had to develop new tricks. Hunting mammals in this compact environment requires tremendous guile. Small, fast and agile, mammals have incredibly acute hearing and smell. Alerted, they can disappear in an instant. Positioning herself downwind from her prey. She lies in wait and listens intently. But she's not ready to strike just yet. Not before unveiling a highly specialized weapon that gives her an edge against this wary prey. <laughs> Pay attention. <coughs> the forest dragon has developed a remarkable behavioral strategy. Mimicry. <coughs> By carefully controlling the flow of gases from her flight bladder, she manipulates her voice and entices her prey. Manipulates her voice? What does this sound like? Go back to the Garden of Eden where there's a serpent in the garden. It's a dragon. Alright, dragons come in different forms. It depends on what the, you know what I'm saying, the uh, inspiration is. You know what I'm saying, what's the intention. So the dragon is able to manipulate any voice. So if it can do it to, you know, make a, a hog's voice, it can do it to make a horse's voice, or it can do it to make your voice. And that's where you get to dragons being able to talk. You can talk to your dragon, and your dragon can talk to you. It can manipulate its voice. Of course, it speaks that paleo picto. Take this back to the Garden of Eden. Let go. But her hunt is disturbed. And again, on the Garden of Eden, remember the, the dragon was cursed in that story. The dragon was cursed and then it had to lie on its belly. And then it had to, you know, be, it, it was cursed to, you know, be, only had to be stuck on its belly. Before that, we was like, what you mean? The serpent was walking around? I don't get it. Now you get it. The serpent was walking around. The dragon was walking around. But then it was cursed in snake form. So snakes might be <coughs> cursed dragons. Shit, I don't know. You know, I'm surfing away. <laughs> cursed forms of dragons. You know what I'm saying? That, you know, used to be dragons, but now they're cursed to have to, you know, slither around. You know what I'm saying? Let go. There's an intruder in her territory. A creature that will come between this dragon and her prey for the last time. It's not just the invasion of her territory that riles her, or the loss of the odd meal. This animal is a real and emerging threat to her very survival. 
her stunted wings allow. But she has the scent now and is determined to finish things. Smaller and more mobile in the forest undergrowth, the new mammalian predators are proving to be accomplished hunters. Left alone, these predators will outcompete her for food, and she would starve. She isn't going to let it happen. The dragon closes to striking range. She blends into her surroundings, unseen, but not unheard. The sound is not a warning to go away, but an invitation to come closer. How many animals hunt like this? Mimicking any voice in the forest. Doesn't that sound like the serpent in the garden? It depends on the intention of the crystal. Remember the crystal is neutral, but what intention does it have? What intention is put on it? When we choose up, we're saying, look, you know, go back into neutral and put the intention of your secure breath, hawa, onto your crystal. You got to empty your cup. Act like you don't know nothing. Just act like you don't know nothing and empty your cup and put the intention of the pure wata and dig through this shit, man. Dig on it. So check this out. This dragon is inviting it's prey by mimicking the voice of its prey's prey using divine intelligence. This is something else, man. The tiger senses a meal. But he is a cautious hunter. Tries a subtle change of pitch. Wow. The prey sounds distressed. An injury, perhaps. Wow. 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 Bogey. Body the tiger bag. falls for it hook, line, and sinker. Body bag. Now watch this shit. You ain't never seen no shit like this before. How an One animal rival. prepares One. his food. More meal. The kill is taken to a clearing. Watch this shit, man. <laughs> oh my goodness. The forest dragon has adapted its ancient weapon into a culinary tool. Culinary tool? Cooked meat is far more easily digested. He doesn't eat the blood. He said, oh, well, cooked meat is easily digested. No, he, he follows a commandment. Not to eat the blood. He must have it cooked. There is no other animal that is on this wave, man. That cooks his food culinary style before he enjoys it. Is this shit mind blasting to you yet, man? Are they acting like this shit is make believe or are they literally telling you what's going on? Right in your face bone. You're the last dragon. Where's your dragon? But the flames draw another mammal near. A 
species that will prove a far greater threat to her survival. I came here to expose a hoax. Suddenly, a whole reptile family is coming to life. What a family. Of all the prehistoric giants, only yours survived the KT catastrophe. And you weren't the only dragon. Seems there was a forest-dwelling Asian dragon, a sea dragon, too, just like the myths. Could there have been others? Uh-huh. There you go. I need more time. The helicopter will be with us any minute, and soon we'll be heading back to England. Once this thing's back in the museum, I won't get a look in. Until then, we'll keep scanning. You need to look at this. I've just noticed these fragments here. What are they? Crushed ribs? No, the rib cage is totally intact. But they're bone fragments, right? And what are they? That explains the weird proportions. Of course. It's got four legs. And two wings. Six limbs. <laughs> no vertebrate that ever lived has six limbs. That's what we dug on. No vertebrae that ever lived has six limbs. Except. The dragonfly. You know. One, two, three, four, five, six. So you have these six limbs matching up. Is that coincidence? Or is it the drop? That they are the same essence. Almost as if as your dragons are being, you know, you know, hatched, will be hatched in these stone, stone ass eggs. In these stone eggs, man, while they're still in the egg, they're able to use maybe their dragonfly essence, their, their dragonfly counterpart. <laughs> I mean, hey, you know, do it. We're just keeping it wavy. So, you know, this counterpart has 360 degree vision. It sees, it sees clearly. It to see clearly. Drag on to see clearly. Alright, let's get some more of this. I mean, some good stuff right here. Only vertebrae to ever have six limbs. It's true, every land-based vertebrate on the planet has four limbs, front feet, back feet, arms and legs. And airborne creatures too, feet and wings, they all have four limbs. But not this dragon. It's got six, it can't be a fake, not now. But if those legs are for real, then they'll show up in its DNA. Oh my. Now that's some freaky mutation. <laughs> this creature has a genetic adaptation unlike anything in the animal kingdom. They're calling it a mutation, people. Not a creation. You see these sickos? This is a divine creation of a higher dimension. This is a this is a, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> This is a high power, a high power crystal. And they want to call it a mutation of a genetic adaptation. You know, some, come on, man. These hijacks are, are really real. Come on. Do you know it? In the gene responsible for generating limbs. <laughs> and it's here in mythology, too. The Chinese, the Aztecs, Ooh. Polynesians, they all drew images of creatures with the same adaptation. Giant, six-limbed reptile. The same mutation. Jeez, how did they all get the same mutation? Come on. Man, people are silly. They all drew 
the same creature with the same adaptation. They all drew the same creature of the same creation. And yeah, the Aztec, we already know. Tiles. The clue was there all along. How could I have missed it? These drawings aren't wild imagination. They're records. These primitive people were telling us something. We weren't listening. And if the images are accurate, then there are even more evidence that there were many types of dragon and they lived everywhere on the planet. Everywhere. Okay, we've got evidence for a marine dragon, the sea serpent of legend. A forest dragon that lived in Asia. The Chinese dragon that adorns a thousand pots. And you, well let's call you the mountain dragon. Have you left your mark on European folk history? Romania. Dragon iconography. Here you are, recorded in stained glass. The locals called you the devil from the mountains. The devil. The legend conforms pretty much to type, terrorizing. It's always this devil thing. Remember Leviathan? All right, remember Leviathan? He's also called Satan too. Anything to do with these dragons, anything to do with these Negroes, these Nagas are called devils here, right? Let go. Stock, breathing fire, a monumental battle to the death. Is this a 15th century photograph of you? So the local farmers gave you a name, the Mountain Devil. And what kind of devil were you? We're down to the wire. They'll be moving the body out any minute, and I'll have to leave with it. One last check. Could we have missed something? What's that in the heart? That's something embedded in the right atrium. That's not Ooh. organic matter. Uh-oh. that dragons and humans were at war that dragons and humans were at war remember you're not human my negro my naga you're not human my americans you are immortal you are not human you are fire water air and earth you are not human you are not mankind you are the dragon. Where is your dragon? They're at war with your dragons. Hmm. They're at war with you continually. Hmm. They're at war with the dragons. They're at war with the Negro. They're at war with the Negro. They're at war with the dragon. <sighs> is your enemy of your enemy your friend? You know, that's all I'm saying. survived but their survival was precarious fire was the ace that kept them one step ahead of the competition
But in time, a new mammal emerged. Small, vulnerable, but supremely intelligent. Physically, man was no match for a dragon, but he recognized the possibilities of fire. With fire, mankind could clear forests for farmland, mold metal into savage weapons. Mankind can do these things, not the so-called Negro, the Naga. We were fighting with our dragons. Now they're doing sorcery. Pay attention to how they're doing the force. You know what I'm saying? Uh, you know, fire around the dragon and, you know, trying to do sorcery to confuse the dragon. Look, man, they put sorcery on you. They tried to put another magic, a lesser magic, over a dominant one because your magic was disconnected when you disconnected from your creator. When you went after another power, another magic. And we needed to go through this experience to know what it's like to be without that which we are. And we went through it in this dimension. In this matrix, this illusion. And now the sky is falling down. The elevator is coming down. And it will be close again. There will be no barrier. In the evolutionary blink of an eye, mankind was pushing the most deadly predator in the natural history of our planet to the verge of extinction. Most deadly predator. See how they paint this beautiful energy. All right, mankind against this deadly predator. You know what I mean? So the hijack is exposing the hijack. They had turned the dragon's most potent weapon against them. Mm. The stories of these epic battles were recorded in folklore around the world, culminating here in Romania. A dark story passed down through generations. The story of a demon on a mountaintop hmm. and of knights drawn into the mist, never to be knights. seen again until now. Alright, so they brought in the knights, and I'm just about to ask y'all, who is Prester John? Humans and dragons. Mortal enemies. Humans and dragons. Mortal enemies. You're not human, Negro. If these knights went looking for a dragon, it looks like they found one. This isn't ice damage, this is carbonization. These men were burned alive by a dragon for sure, but not ours. Our dragon never breathed fire. We haven't finished yet. Yes, we have. Look. Look. Carbon. I found it on one of those bodies out there. Those bodies have been scorched. They're right, of course. It's the find of the century, and we can't risk it turning to mush. But the this was the find of this century. We're talking about your dragons. Mountains are called. did those men find up there? They're ready for it! This section here. Am I just reading this? Is this a reproductive system? These are oviducts, right? Small ovaries. The 
female. Yet there's no evidence of follicular activity. The reproductive tract is immature. It's a juvenile. It's a baby. That clinched it. The creature in the autopsy room was a baby. It wasn't just the scene of a random crime, it was a nest. The local myth is starting to sound remarkably like an accurate verbal account of a real event. The knights weren't killed by our dragon, they were killed by an adult, perhaps defending its young. And a dragon corpse can tell us how their bodies worked, but a nest? can tell us so much more how they lived. My guess, up in those mountains, we'll find evidence for a dragon family. Tanner is about to unravel a medieval tragedy. It is the 15th century, and a mountain dragon is under threat. Fifteenth century is the fourteenth hundred Negro. Fourteen hundreds Papal Bull take down these dragons. Fifteenth century dragons are rocking here. You just got invaded and your dragons did too. And they're wanna hear it again? cave wasn't just the scene of a random crime, it was a nest. The local myth is starting to sound remarkably like an accurate verbal account of a real event. The knights weren't killed by our dragon, they were killed by an adult, perhaps defending its young. And a dragon corpse can tell us how their bodies worked, but a nest? can tell us so much more how they lived. My guess, up in those mountains, we'll find evidence for a dragon family. Tanner is about to unravel a medieval tragedy. This is real spill. It is the 15th century, and a mountain dragon is under threat. It is the 15th century. So readjust everything you think you know, Negro. Because in the 1400s, niggas had dragons. Let go. Fourteen seventy-five. This is 1475, Negro. <laughs> Columbus came here in 1492. <laughs> oh, shit. Who was Prester John? The distant ancestors of this female mountain dragon fed on the wild herds that roamed the vast Asian grasslands. Uh huh. But the herds were tamed by man. For dragons, they were no longer fair game. They were livestock. And so the dragons that gorged themselves on the plains have been driven to the remote regions of Europe. And in this remote place, wild game is scarce. Today she is hunting the rarest creature on earth, but not to eat. Today, she's looking for a mate. She spreads her scent throughout her territory. Oh, man. This is 1475. Strong winds carry the pheromones south.
Female dragons mate once every seven years, yet this mature female has never seen a male dragon. Every seven years, every seven day. You see, they don't eat the blood, they cook their food. They do this every seven years. Their eggs, uh, you know what I'm saying, something about every 30 years, the eggs fall off the trees. Man, all right, come on. Nevertheless, every year when she comes into season, instinct commands her to play out the rituals of attraction. Her season is almost finished, and the window will close for another year. Another change of plan. Something interesting about a half mile below the cave. snow has revealed unusual features on the rock. But to the casual observer, they could be anything, perhaps the result of some odd geological process, but me, I've got fire on my mind. And these rocks look like they've been scorched. No, no, don't worry about samples. I need you to follow this line and look for more burn marks. And tread carefully, watch for hidden crevasses. Okay, approximately two hours due south from the drop-off point, heading towards the scene of death. Can you take a GPS reference? Okay. Evidence of discoloration of the rock. Seems to have been subjected to a blast of intense heat. It's literally scarred the rock. Wow, okay, if you ever been to uh, Zion, especially, man, and my bros know what I'm talking about, you know what I'm saying, um, you know what I'm saying, you might see rocks that look like they've been scorched, you know what I'm saying, you might pass a bunch of burnt rocks and be like, man, what happened here? And it's just hella rocks that are hella dark, and you're like, how did all these dark black rocks get piled up over here? Now you get it. These are dragon fire wars. These dragons were fighting in these wars. Some all these scorched rocks and this scorched stuff is dragon fire. Man, we <laughs> we're 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 walking in a battle zone, man, of dragon fire. These rocks have been burned to melting point in symmetrical lines. The dimensions are frightening. Lightning couldn't do this. Forest fire. It's not likely we're halfway up a mountain at the edge of a glacier. The lair is nearby. Was there some kind of fight? Female returns to her den, a network of caves melted into dense glacial ice. Despite the cold temperatures outside, in here the temperature is relatively warm. Like an igloo, the thick walls retain heat. But the mountain dragon has another line of defense against the cold. From her marine ancestor, She's inherited a blood protein that prevents her tissues from freezing. <laughs> it has proved vital to her species as they are forced into increasingly inhospitable habitats. Soon it will be autumn. 